Halloween is just 25 days away, and what better way to celebrate the spookiest time of year than with a massive diorama of the spookiest location in Middle Earth. I'm Lockie, welcome to Zorba Zorp, and today we begin my most epic speed build ever as we create the Hill of Sorcery and Fortress of Sauron the Necromancer, Dol Guldur. We're talking dark dungeons, a filthy ruined castle, enough rusty metal to need a daily tetanus shot, the biggest spiders you've ever seen, undead wraiths who just don't die, and the spookiest villain of all, the Necromancer. We of course all know the iconic silhouette of Dol Guldur from the Hobbit trilogy, but it actually plays host to a massive siege during the War of the Ring. And as such, we're going to be building a huge layout to fully encapsulate the entire location in tabletop form. From the spider-infested forests of Mirkwood through the foundations of cliff and stone, right up to the towering heights of the fortress itself. We're going to need a lot of foam, a lot of plastic, and a lot of candy to get this done in a month. Halloween is coming to Middle-earth. If you're pumped for Spooky Sauron Month, hit that subscribe button down below and strap in Zorbtrons, we're gonna have some fun. Before we go diving into hacking up our mountain of foam, we need to work out what style of fortress that foundation will be supporting. So, I dived into all of my resource materials and art and reference books and found some great imagery and the exact schematic of the actual set built at Stone Street Studios in Wellington for the White Council fight scene. And that courtyard is gonna be the centerpiece for the upper fortress. Now, in a fabulous Halloween coincidence, the fall of the Necromancer supplement comes out this month Big Brain Marketing GW, and so does this lovely Dolgal Dua Ruin Kit, and Rob and the lovely Middle Earth team have sent me over 12 of these screen accurate bad boys, so they're gonna form the bulk of our fortification, combined with some older Ruin Kits of my own, and a heap of carved foam stonework. Using our reference books, and of course the films themselves, up first we'll focus on the courtyard, and then that can give us a sense of scale for the cliffs and rock work, and the submerged torture dungeons of the Necromancer. As I research this build, I actually ended up with a couple of spare copies of some amazing Weta Workshop Middle-Earth books which are invaluable hobby resources, so if you'd like to win one of these, like this video, subscribe and comment Chronicle down below, and let me know your favourite Middle-Earth location you'd love to see me tackle in an upcoming build. The first and most excruciating step with plastic kits is to clip and clean everything off the sprue. And after hyperventilating with excitement and anxiety in face of an excruciating amount of plastic, I sorted all of the components into piles so I could rapidly assemble structures without losing momentum. Now, our courtyard is an equilateral triangle with three similar colonnades, two being heavily ruined and falling away to the sheer cliffs below, but the back, or the western side, is fairly intact. So I started with that section of the ruin and began to explore how these plastic kits could be used to replicate the set from the movie with as much screen accuracy as possible. Now these kits aren't screen perfect, but they are incredibly close, and most of the design choices altered from the films was done to suit playability and adapt the structures to wargaming and above all else to make things modular. The structural freedom is incredible. You can make all sorts of crazy structures. Ray Dran Field has done another stellar job with these kits. Whoever is creating the briefs for the recent ranges of 40k terrain seriously needs a good talking to from Ray. This should be the benchmark for Games Workshop modular scenery. So things are getting a little bit messy now. As I try to drill down on that screen accuracy, I'm finding a lot of inconsistencies in continuity between the physical set that was built in the studios and the digital model that expands upon that landscape. Now, of course, we want the whole castle integrating that triangle element into the broader castle is absolutely key. In the set, it just goes up against a flat wall, which isn't going to work for us at all. We're going to start to create a mirroring of these structures to build them out and link them into the rest of the castle. As I expanded these colonnades, my big reference was a single panning shot as Galadriel descends into the courtyard, which shows the structures continuing into that digital set extension, and I found I had to make a few concessions. You'll notice my build has four windows between the stairs rather than 
than three, and the spiky archways above the stairwells don't continue all the way down to the floor of the courtyard. But the proportions of the sections and the key elements all perfectly match the schematic, so everything feels right in spite of these differences. I also shrunk down the length of the rear colonnade towers that build up behind the courtyard in the west, and the entrances to the triangle at the north and south feature some off-script choices as well. The southern gate I decided to make exclusively from the plastic kits, joining the west and southeastern sides with a really cool gatehouse made from two sets of the spiky angled archways with an upper level. I was constantly keeping in mind that I wanted lots of stairwells and elevator positions, not just to capture Dol Guldur's essence, but to also allow for some fantastic defensive positions for a future War of the Ring era Dol Guldur siege battle report. The northern gate is our first major deviation from screen accuracy, as I had begun to muse on the overall board itself, and I soon realized that to build the entire fortress at scale would end up being over 20 feet long. I want this build to feel complete at 6 feet long, with a possible expansion to 9 feet down the line, so I needed to begin to collapse some design elements together, and that means bringing in the massive signature towers that form the iconic profile of the fortress. The southern gate would form the foundation of one such tower. Using the old leftover pieces of a resin kit I used to make, I had some great angular archways for the gates. I pinned together an awkward angular tower profile, which I will then extend upwards high into the air with extruded polystyrene foam work. I also love the idea of incorporating a range of brickwork sizes and styles to make the fortress really haphazardly constructed and evil. This was built by Sauron's minions after all, albeit on the bones of an older elven structure. With the upper structures coming together, it's time to build the floor of this upper level. So I grabbed my sheet of extruded polystyrene foam and began marking out our equilateral triangle, using some of my daughter's magnetiles to ensure a perfect 45 degree angle. I dropped down all of my elements onto the board and traced out their footprint and then slowly and carefully cut it out. I used a brand new sharp blade over my hot wire cutter as I wanted precision perfect on all of these crazy angles. To give myself an idea of the flow of the courtyard, I painstakingly copied the tile floor plan from the schematic and marked out the finished design in pen. And suddenly the courtyard began to come to life before my eyes. I cannot wait to see all the little terrace tiles weaving across the stone surface. This also enabled me to make really informed decisions on what parts of the eastern side of the triangle should be collapsed and rubbled. In both the set and the digital models, there are large expanses of this courtyard that are totally collapsed, and this makes for incredibly interesting landscape both visually, but also for gameplay. I'm immensely looking forward to Elrond knocking wraiths off the edge for fun in some battle reports. <laughs> Everything we have done so far has taken over 40 hours. There's 18 days until Halloween and we've basically got nothing. We need to start hauling ass. Getting it really close to the film has been murdering me on time. We're gonna build a completely modular dungeon directly underneath the courtyard and really start to capture that evocative feeling of the spooky, narrow, claustrophobic internals of the ruins of Dol Guldur. Before we begin on the dungeon, it's time to talk about today's sponsor. And well, it's me. Yes, I'm absolutely pumped to announce that our epic fortnightly Battle Games in Middle-Earth livestream is back after my four-month I Have a Baby hiatus, and it's already kicked off over on our second channel, Zorpa Zorp Streams. Each fortnight, we go through a single issue of the classic retro magazine serial Battle Games in Middle-Earth that roped many of us into the hobby in the early 2000s, painting and playing some insane live battle reports. My beloved Patreons even have the chance to become the official sponsors of the minis where painting have crazy characters named after them and watch them take part in the campaign before getting to keep them forever. Make sure you head over and subscribe to the second channel because you will not get any notifications from this main channel when we go live. And oh, if you're not already subscribed here, then what are you doing, you goofball? Smash that little red button and ding that stupid, stupid bell. All right, enough shilling of myself. Let's get back to the build. I grabbed a second sheet of XBS foam, this time not sculpting grade as this floor is purely structural, and cut out the footprint of the lower level, incorporating the foundations of the towers that have collapsed in the upper courtyard. Then I set about making my two stairwells which continue down from hexagon chambers in the upper colonnades. The stairs included in the kits come with all these little accessories so you can change their orientation, and I was able to make the perfect little spiral winding down two flights through the hexagonal tower. The flights are actually 
generally quite short and steep, and with a platform in between, they'll be well suited to gameplay. Once both stairwells were built, I started planning the dungeon, and I decided that there would be a fixed outer structure with a series of modular triangular dungeon tiles that would slot in between. So I joined the two stairwells with a winding set of tiles, and then grabbed a whole bunch of extra floor tiles kindly sent over by Rob and glued them together and pre-primed seven different triangles. These will eventually be covered in wall tiles with little corridors, doors and archways that can be changed every single game for a unique experience. With those temporarily in place, we can now map out the last internal walls to help sell the idea that this fortress is built into the rocky foundations of Armon Lank. I'm going to have the western side of the dungeon as a rock face made from plaster rock molds. We won't do this today, but instead when we go crazy with the rock molds next week. So for now, I've simply cut some sheets of foam to be the mounting plate for the rock face and glued the floor tiles down adjacent to it. You'll notice that the triangular dungeon has two passageways heading to the west. These will link up with the rest of the city and join another central courtyard accessed by two upper gates and the colonnade passageways on the western side of the upper courtyard. With the essentials of this lower level complete, it's time to join our two levels by connecting our stairwells. I had to cut out the footprint of the towers in the upper XPS sheets, and with a bit of trimming and repositioning, the structures lined up perfectly. It's October 15th, halfway to Halloween, and we can finally sit the courtyard on top of the dungeon. But there is a lot left to do. The internals of the dungeon, the big tower, all of the cliffs and rockwork, the whole fortress underneath, not to mention Mirkwood Forest all around the base. But this is starting to look like something. First up, we need to get these layers joined, so I added a second layer of XPS foam to continue down our collapsed flooring. In my mind, the courtyard above is built on a serious stone foundation, and the dungeons below are a modified cave complex, which helps justify the lack of floor in between these two levels. I carved away the foam on an angle towards the dungeon, and then added a bunch of ruined pieces to the plastic kits, showing through to kind of help blend those two layers. Then it was time to bring in our first element of sculpted brickwork. The foundation foundation of the tower and the northern battlement. If you'd like an in-depth guide on my stonework carving process, you can check out the video linked above, but it essentially consists of carving and depressing rows of bricks, widening the grout lines with a pencil, and then using crumpled aluminium foil to impart a rocky texture. As all these layers will obviously be fully removable, I built one section of stonework as high as the lower dungeon, and then textured the floor piece of the courtyard with a matching pattern but there is one task yet to complete, and it is the most finicky, daunting, and satisfying of all. It's time to carve a screen-accurate series of terraced floor tiles in the most mental brickwork pattern I've ever seen. The courtyard is made from a series of tiered flagstone terraces, only subtly different in height. So at first I grab my proxen and cut down some sheets of extruded poly to four, eight, and 12 millimeters thick. I then set about cutting these down into their various shapes using the marked up floor plan as my guide. I used a pencil to map out any damaged sections and cut those down to match, and carefully trimmed away some 4mm square stairs to terrace down any joins between the larger heights and that flat bedrock layer. Before gluing down these sheets, I smashed them with crumpled foam to establish my rocky texture, and also hit the areas of the courtyard floor that are left exposed by the pattern. With some high bond PVA, these all fit snugly in against the wall pieces with grooves cut in to mesh nicely with any protruding pillars, and then it was time for the centerpiece, the triangular dais. This is another equilateral triangle with a chamfer to the base reducing in cross-sectional area, and a brickwork and texture pattern up the sides and across the top. With that glued in place, it was time for the batshit insane brickwork of the flagstones. This begins with a series of lines coming out from the dais at various angles intersecting with columns and stairs. Before tackling the horizontal lines, I cut a triangular pattern into the surrounding floor tiles beneath the colonnades and on the outer battlements to get a feel for the overall flooring aesthetic and then set about painstakingly scrubbing through various shots of the films that show the floor as well as photos of the Weta Workshop environments to create a stonework pattern that matched as close as possible. The pattern features a lot of distorted diamonds and triangles and a mix of repeating and totally random tiles though all obeying the angular style of the stonework. The grout lines were 
whited with a pencil and the surface was detailed even further by hand with a scalpel with some extra flair added to the ruined sections to really bring it to life. And then the final element to totally unify our hand carved and plastic kit elements is the stairwells. There are nine of these in the courtyard, three on each side, and some of them I could join directly to the plastic kits, which is great as having these removable so I can use them as scatter terrain is awesome, but some of them, which are heavily ruined, had to be mounted directly to the board. And after an exhausting 13 days and over 100 hours of labor, Dolguldur is starting to take shape. But as I edit this on the 22nd of October with just a week left till Halloween, I am shuddering with the immensity of what lies before me. As always, my ambitions have grown more and more as I submerge myself within the project. I think I'll be happy if by the 31st I can get the first third of the fully completed board done. The courtyard, the cliffs, and all the way down to the first section of super spooky spider infested Mirkwood. But even that is a tall order. A huge shout out to my Patreons who have been painfully bereft of my usual work in progress teasers on our Discord server because the disclosure dates for these plastic kits were literally the day this video has been published. But I'll smash you guys with photos over the next week and beyond as always. If you want to join these amazing folks who support me, check out the links in the description for an awesome set of benefits. And a huge thank you to everyone for watching. An extra special thank you to Patreon Declan Callahan who sent me this amazing Keeper of the Dungeons model. You can be sure we'll be seeing a lot more of him soon. Be sure to subscribe and smash that stupid bell so you don't miss out on next week's follow-up in the mess of the algorithm. And I'll be back real soon. Lockie.